Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we're going to be taking a look at the performance of a Unified Dream Machine Pro when compared to other Unified devices. Now this is kind of just an add-on. I've done a uh, performance test like this before with the Security Gateway Pro, the Security Gateway 3 port, and quite a few of the edge router devices. So this is pretty much just adding on to that and seeing how the Dream Machine Pro compares to all the others. Now, just a quick recap, when I do these tests, I have the baseline, which is just two computers connected back to back, and then for every other test, I will connect the device between the two computers and run a series of iPerf3 tests, which is just like upload, download, UDP, 30 parallel connections, and bi-directional throughput. And I run all of these tests against different uh, device configurations, so there's four different configurations that I run all these tests on. One of them is just out of the box, straight up, minimal configuration. The second one differs between the edge router or the security gateway and Dream Machine, but basically it's the default security setting. So you start turning on IPS and just kind of the minimum security features that you would want. Then we'd run all the tests with all the security features on. So all 35 categories for threat detection, uh, country blocking, ad blocking, all of that. And then the last test is against a uh, quality of service configuration or smart queue. So now that we're up to speed on the testing, let's go ahead and look at these results that I got. So for the TCP standard upload, our baseline was 940 megabits per second. Now I will say that this baseline was on different equipment. My initial video came out uh, years ago, so I don't have the exact same baseline as I did back then, which is why if we go over to our UDM Pro numbers, they're technically higher than baseline, which is not possible. The throughput of the UDM is not going to go faster than a physical cable between two computers, but we can pretty safely say that like 946-ish is our baseline for these tests. So there is a little bit of variance between all my older tests and this new one, but Anyways, straight uh, out of the box, 946, minimal security features, 945, all the security features actually back up to 946, and then with the smart queue or quality of service enabled, we're actually down to 900 megabits of throughput. So compared to everything else, it outperforms everything. The only real uh, competitor here is the Edge Router 4 with the 938-ish for all of them, and then 9 or 826 for quality of service. Now, if we move on to TCP standard download, uh, things get a little bit different. The UDM Pro actually took a huge hit on all security services before recovering quite a bit for the smart queue. So again, we're around baseline speeds for out-of-the-box experience and minimal security features, but once we turn all of them on, it looks like our performance went down to about 489 megabits per second. And then once we enabled Smart Queue, we got back up to almost 800 megabits. So compared to something like the Edge Router 4, which had basically baseline speeds in all configurations except QoS, the real takeaway is that, uh, yeah, UDM is a lot faster. It's more than double the QoS speed of the Edge Router 4. Now, again, these other tests aren't really fair comparisons because like the edge router 4 erx X, sfp all of these they don't have security services they're not running ips or anything so they don't have that super intensive stuff to do the most intensive uh, task that these are going to be taking care of is qos so that's basically the most fair comparison here and the udm pro as expected blows it out of the water a more fair comparison would be something like the Security Gateway Pro, where it only managed 500 meg throughput for both security service uh, suites, and then only 230 for its uh, quality of service throughput. So I'm not really sure if this full security service speed is a fluke or what. 489 was way lower than I expected it to be, but I did run that test a few times and got around the same number, so that is what it is. If you know maybe what was making that way lower than I think it should be, let me know in the comments. But let's go ahead and move on to UDP download where it basically met the baseline on every test, including quality of service. So nothing really to see here except for all the other tests that I've done. The edge routers, quality of service obviously affects this test. And then, and the other security gateway products I've tested did absolutely terrible with quality of service and UDP while this one just seemed to stay at line rate. 
but going along with the UDP download, the jitter that I saw, at least for the last um, few seconds of the test for the UDM Pro was definitely lower than pretty much every other device besides the Edge Router 4. So while pretty much all of the Edge routers had a noticeable spike in jitter with quality of service on, and especially the uh, Security Gateway 3 port, the UDM Pro seemed to just kind of scale its jitter up just a tiny bit up to the uh, most intensive test, which was quality of service. But all of these are still basically below every other device's test, with the exception of the Edge Router 4. Now let's move on to the 30 parallel connection rate. This is basically the kind of standard how is this going to work in the real world test because you have multiple connections multiple sessions running through your firewall at any given time so basically the more parallel sessions we can test the better and udm pro did what i would expect and that's line rate now i will say i'm only using a gigabit interface for all of these tests obviously the baseline is 938 and this udm pro is capable of 10 gigabits so we are definitely well beyond the capability of my little one gigabit test here for the UDM Pro. Um, it would be way better to do this with a 10 gigabit test environment, but I do not have one of those yet. So here we are. All we can do is compare the one gigabit performance and awesome. It got 947 for every test where every other device has especially suffered in the quality of service department. And when you compare it to the older Security Gateway Pro and Security Gateway 3 port, um, yeah, it, it's night and day. Now, moving on to bi-directional throughput, this is a test of both send and receive at the same time, so theoretically, two gigabits should be the max here. Our baseline from the previous test environment was about 1700, but here's where the UDM actually kind of scaled down a bit. So our Edge Router 4 was able to pull baseline in basically the first three configurations, and then 500 meg for quality of service. Our UDM Pro, on the other hand, was pulling baseline for the first two, so that's out of the box and minimal security services. But then we dropped down to about 1400 total throughput with all security services enabled. And then again, moved down to about 1100 megabits with quality of service. So still way better than every other device, but still getting kind of close to that one gigabit total throughput with quality of service enabled at least. And then the last actual, um, technical test that I did is the power draw and this is just kind of like an average of how much power it's drawing throughout each test and the UDM Pro pulls the second most power of everything uh, the USG Pro 4 was the most power hungry device at like 20 watts I mean I say power hungry 20 watts isn't a ton of power for a networking device but the UDM Pro the most power I saw it taking was 17 watts so about 3 watts less than the uh, Security Gateway 4 and then when it's straight out of the box and idling, it's about 13 watts. And while that isn't really a ton of power, um, the edge routers still obviously went out in the power department with the edge router 4 being the most power hungry at 8 watts. So the wattage of the UDM Pro. Now the next few sections were kind of like my subjective rating spreadsheets. If you watched the last videos, you're probably familiar with this. But basically I just kind of rate on a scale of 1 to 10 how I think various areas of the device uh, compare. So this is totally just my opinion, but we'll go ahead and go through each one. So advanced configuration, I had basically all the edge router devices at a nine because edge routers can support quite a bit of advanced configuration. I mean, they can do MPLS if you want to. And before I rated the uh, security gateways a five and a four, and my reasoning there was that the uh, three port security gateway could do less security services than the Pro. And now with the Dream Machine Pro, I rated that a six, so one above the USG4. And really the only reason is that the software has come quite a ways since then. Maybe the USG4 at this point has some of the more advanced features, but there are things that they've added to the software and some things that the UDM Pro can do that the other ones don't like i think the sd wan is a feature that they have now even though it's kind of proprietary it's it's still there so there's a little bit more to it but it is still not on the level of an edge router when it comes to the advanced configs now unified threat management obviously i put all of the edge routers at a one because they don't have that and i put the usg4 on par with the uh, dream machine pro because they pretty much do the exact same level of threat detection. 
Um, probably should have raised the UDM to a 9 here. I think it can do more than the USG uh, 4. But for the most part, they detect a lot of the same things. Now, the firewall, this is basically how well it performs as just a generic firewall device. Input, output rules, yada yada. I rated all of the edge routers before, one higher than the security gateways, and that's only because I find the interface for the actual Unify devices to be a little bit more convoluted to get down to actual firewall rules. There's a lot more clicking where the edge routers just have it right there in the firewall menu. And if you don't even want to use a graphic interface, you have the option to do command line. So that's why I rated those higher in the firewall section. It doesn't really have anything to do with it being a quote, better firewall. It's more the configuration of the firewall. Now, UDM or Unified Device Management, um, all the Unified devices are nine because they all run Unify. All the edge routers are threes because they don't. You have to manage each edge router separately. All the Unify devices you can manage from a single uh, software pane. And then last is the expandability, which is basically just how many ports it has. UDM Pro has 10 overall, which is more than all the others. Now my ease of use tab is a little bit misleading because the features section weighed a little bit in on the ease of use, especially in the firewall section, but these are really, when it comes down to using the device, how well I think certain areas uh, do when it comes to actually using it day to day. Now, the initial setup, I put the UDM at a nine, which is ahead of the USG4 and USG3 port. And the reason I rated it higher is because it includes the Unify controller. So the UDM Pro is technically a console device. It comes with the Unify software already installed. So when you set up your UDM, you have your controller set up. The USG4 and USG3 required another controller. So you had to have that set up before you could actually add it into the environment. That's just one less step with the UDM Pro. And then obviously the edge routers are a little bit more complicated to set up because they don't really work straight out of the box. You have to do an initial config before they work. Now maintenance, I rated everything at an eight, basically because they're about the same to maintain day to day. I guess technically you could say the Unify devices, the Pro, the USG4 and all those could be a little bit higher here because you can like push firmware upgrades, which is actually the next section. But maintaining them is a little bit easier just because of their centralized nature where edge routers are kind of, you have to log into each one and maintain all that unless you're using something like UNMS. Now, the firmware upgrade department, I have all the Unify devices as a nine because A, you can set them to automatically update. You really don't have to worry about that. And B, it's a unified environment. So you can take care of your firmware upgrades all from one pane of glass. The edge routers, which I rated five, you have to log into each one, upload the new firmware, reboot it. It's a more manual process. And then troubleshooting, I rated the edge routers a seven. I think really looking back, this is probably just cause I'm way more used to an edge router, but I also think that an edge router is going to give you a lot more granular information if you know how to get it. With the Security Gateway Pro and the UDM Pro, they're kind of limited to the Unify controller software. So if you need to find stuff like a legit MAC address table or ARP forwarding table or anything like that that you would use during some troubleshooting, it's a little bit harder to decipher because it doesn't really have a MAC address table. That is the clients tab in the controller. And I'm pretty sure that you go there for your ARP table as well. So it's a little different. Like you have to do a little bit more digging and wrap your mind around the software networking part to really get the information you want while you're troubleshooting where an edge router is a little more old school. You put in the standard commands, show MAC address table, show IP route, show whatever. It's, it's more complicated, but it's easier when you've been in uh, the field for a while. And then last is the configuration updates. This is pretty much how easy it is to make a change. Edge routers are five because you have to log into each one of them to update them. And the security gateways are a seven because again, it's the unified pane of glass, single pane of glass. Now, I don't know why I put the UDM as a five. I think that's a mistake. Pretty sure that's supposed to be up uh, with the others at a seven. So whoops. That is supposed to be up here, not down with the edge routers. Now, second to last page is cost, and no surprise here, the UDM Pro is the most expensive. However, it is not that far ahead of the Gateway Pro when it came out, 
and it absolutely smashes that thing. So I would not consider the USG Pro, which I'm pretty sure they don't sell anymore. When they did, that was how much it cost. I'm pretty sure you can get those on eBay still for like 50 bucks or something. But the UDM Pro is $379 and the Edge Router, let's see, Edge Router 4, which is probably its closest performer in the Edge Router department, is 200 So nearly double the price of that. But as we saw in all the tests, it could be worth it. Uh, the UDM Pro definitely has more power, but it's up to you to decide between the unified devices and the edge router line, depending on what you want. Now, last page I did, I call it the Toasty Score. This is pretty much just a uh, stupid algorithm that I put everything through to come up with a percentage out of 100 with all of the tests and the subjective uh, ratings. So, however I built that algorithm, I don't really remember anymore, but the UDM Pro came out actually below the Edge Router 4 in the total percentage score, but not by a whole lot. I do remember that the main thing that counts against this chart, or the biggest thing that counts against it, is the price. So that's probably why the UDM Pro is so much lower. So it's pretty much a toss-up between the Edge Router 4 and the UDM Pro. Now, what did we learn from this video? Is the UDM Pro worth it? Well, yeah, probably. If we were running a 10 gigabit test against this instead of just a 1 gigabit, this number would probably be higher because it would score beyond a gigabit in a lot of the previous tests. So this really isn't a fair comparison for the entire device against all these others, but it is a fair comparison of its 1 gig performance between them. And there were a few tests that I expected it to basically be baseline speed where it wasn't. So basically, do with this information what you will. These were the numbers that I got. Um, this is not installed in my production network yet. So this is really just kind of a initial, how is this thing maybe going to perform type of deal. When it goes into my production network, it will be connected to 10 gigabit and it will be getting all of the abuse that my Edge Router 4 is currently getting. So we'll get a better idea about how well it performs in that scenario. Anyways, hopefully this was a little bit uh, informative for you. Hopefully you learned something. And as always, happy networking.